muted. Change is when you start your therapy tracks. So that's kind of where this session starts off. You'll see we already have a patient in the system and we have a case created for um, Andrea and uh, the case is dated as of October 26th and I did that for training purposes so that you can see how the system will prompt you when additional documents are due. As we create our case, which is a normal process to um, identify starting an episode of care with the patient, then we're going to go ahead and start our therapy tracks. And you'll see it doesn't look um, too different from what you're doing now. You have a start new track link that is available here. And when you click on those links, instead of going into an additional tab and filling out some diagnosis information and the CPT codes for the plan, what will happen is a new document window will open up when you click on that start new track link. What this does is it allows the system to know that you're starting um, a document and the first document is always the evaluation. You'll see that we have types of therapy applied to the document. So these are some items that are available to you, and we need you to select at least one option to apply to the document. That'll really um, tie into the assessment that you'll be doing in the document. So you know, if you just want to put a generalized item in there, that's fine, but you'll have some additional options available. And it'll really depend on your patient that you're working with as well. So at minimum, we need one type of therapy applied to the document, but of course you can have multiples depending on your patient. Now I do want to go over the types of therapy that are available to you. So we'll take a look at PT right now. You'll see that we have options for physical therapy, contracture management, wound care, and positioning. Okay, But I also want to take a look at OT and ST options as well just so that you can see what you have available. So we'll cancel this screen here and we'll click on the start new track link next to OT. As you can see, it's pretty much the same new document window. It does identify OT at the top left corner and has the OT evaluation listed. Right below that, we'll have types of therapy uh, for OT, which will be occupational therapy, contracture management, positioning, dysphagia therapy, and low vision programming. Same rules still apply. You still need um, at least one type of therapy selected, but of course you can have multiples depending on the patient you're working with. All right, we'll go ahead and cancel that and take a look at speech. Now, speech, we have three options available. We have augmentative and alternative communication, dysphagia therapy, and speech language cognitive therapy. Okay. Now, we'll be going through PT documents today, um, but we're really honing in on functionality. So regardless of your discipline, you'll know how to fill out the documents with all the systems that we have. Um, I will pinpoint differences between OT and ST documents along the way just to give you, you know, some information about them. But again, we're stressing functionality. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click on this start new track for PT. We'll select a type of therapy. Now once everybody selects a type of therapy to apply to their document, the next step here at the bottom left corner of the windows will be to identify a certification date. So the first field is what we call the certification from date. That's when you're starting. Um, and so this would be you know, the date that you're doing the evaluation or if you're starting that therapy track that day, you can go ahead and select the date that you need. Just keep in mind this first field cannot be dated in the future and it cannot be prior to the case date. Okay. Now again, for training, we're going to use October 26th just so we can backdate it a little bit. And then we also have a through date here, which is the second field that is available. Now this through date identifies how long the certification period is, and it's determined by a workflow that we have in the system. And you guys can make uh, specific rules for certain payers for the system to follow. Uh, by default, we have the default duration set to 30 days. And there's also a maximum certification that uh, the corporation can set up. And that could be, you know, a duration of 90 days if you need it. Um, if you need to push it out even further, you know, we'll have some options there that we can um, cover and make sure that it's set up to your specific needs. But it will actually autofill here for 30 days. All right, so in the event that you need to change that, and maybe expand out to 60 or 90, depending on the payer source the patient's using, you do have drop-down menus that are available to make it easier to select the date. 
All right now, right below that, we have an option here that's available to you if you would like to start the track without going directly into the document. So commonly, this would be used if you are maybe um, starting an evaluation right before lunch or right at the end of the day. You can at least start the track and come back later and finish the document. This is also useful for rehab directors. Uh, so if you're anticipating a patient coming on to caseload, you know, you can prep the system and have that case started and have the therapy track started so that the evaluating therapist can come back later and finish that document. But this will allow us to then get into our other modules, such as the scheduling modules and the projections area, so that we can get that patient kind of ready uh, and on the schedule. I'll go ahead and show you if I click on that right now and select Add you'll see that the document will not open on the screen. It actually takes us back to the case manager with that therapy track expanded. And the therapy tracks uh, look pretty much the same as you're using now. Um, you'll see the therapy details such as the date range and the current payer and information regarding primary care provider and responsible therapist. You'll now see an item for the frequency and duration which will be filled out once included in the document. Off to the right side, again, we'll see the areas to view the diagnosis and the treatment plan. Again, right now, ours is blank because we have not filled that out in the evaluation document, so it is just listed there as a placeholder. In addition to your therapy track information, we now have a document section, so that's going to be new to you. You'll see a documents area, and this is where we will provide a list of the names of the documents. Um, you'll see the full name, you'll see date range, and we'll identify if that document is complete, if it's incomplete, if it is um, needs to be created, so you'll get some good details there. And depending on the user's uh, security roles and the rights that they have, um, they're going to see some additional options here. So if they have the ability to edit and uh, make adjustments to the document, they'll have a link for that. Uh, printing options are also available. And then uh, depending on if they have rights to delete, they might see that ad additional option. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and delete this document here. And we're going to delete the track. We're going to start from scratch again, but this time I want to show you how to go directly into the document if that's something that you need. So we'll go ahead and delete this. All right, once it's deleted, we'll click the Start New Track link, enter in the type of therapy and our certification dates. And instead of using that additional check mark here, we're actually going to click Add as if we were going to go directly into the document. As you do that, the document will appear on the screen. All right, just taking a moment for it to load up. All right, now as you're working with the documents, if you want to move that patient list out of the way, don't forget about those little push pin options or the, uh, the close option, that X at the top of the patient list. That's just getting it out of the way so that you can work with the document, um, again, depending on your screen sizes. All right, once in the document, you'll see the patient name, medical record number, case description, and then your start of care and certification dates. Those are going to be at the top of the document. If at any time you need to change the dates, drop-down menus are available. You can only change the dates um, as you're working in the document. Once the document is completed, it will be locked down. However, if the user has rights to unlock to make modifications to the documents, then that would be um, an additional right that you would have. But commonly, this information is pretty much going to stay the same. Right below the patient name, you'll see an evaluation only item. Now, this check mark is used to identify um, that we are just assessing the patient, and that's it. So if you have a patient where you're, you're not picking them up for caseload, we're just doing an assessment, then you would use this additional item. It does change the requirements and allow you to fill out just the general tab and the assessment tab only. If you're doing a full evaluation, which we will be doing today, we will not use that check mark because we're going to go through the general tab, we're going to fill out the assessment, we'll create some goals and a plan of care, and um, you know enter all that information into the system. 
Right? Now the first um, tab that you'll fill out here is a general tab. Consists of the clinician name and a physician field. Now the physician field um, will fill out if we already have the name of that physician in the patient record. Um, in this case, I've left it blank so that you can see if it is not available, that physician item will display in red to identify it's a required field. To the right of that physician field, there's a little magnifying glass that you can click on. And uh, as you make that selection of that button, it's going to open up a find physician window. Now, this will allow you to search for physicians loaded in your database. If you are looking for a specific criteria, you'll see that information here at the top left, and then you can type in the specific details that you're looking for. Or if you prefer to scroll through a list that we already have available, you can just simply click the Find button without adding any additional information. That will allow you to see all the physicians loaded in your database. As you look through that list, if you cannot find the physician that you need, there is a new option that's also available here so that you can always add a physician um, if it's somebody uh, that is not currently in your system. If you do click the new button, just want to let you know we have some minimum requirements of a last name for the physician, but I'm going to highly recommend that you put as much information as you can to make it a little bit easier to find these physicians, especially the ones with the you know common last names like Smith, Jones, Brown. So, you know, first name, great, title, if you have the address and phone number, that's even better. Okay, but make sure, you know, you put all that information that you do have. It does make your lives a lot easier as you're selecting the physician that you need for that patient. Once you enter in the information, uh, you can click Save at the bottom. It will save that physician for future use in the database and also apply that name to the document. All right. As we select the um, physician, we can see now Tim's name is here and uh, the requirements is satisfied, and we can move on with our document. On the left hand side, there's a check mark that you'll see, which you'll use if there's some kind of special agreement not to bill for the evaluation. So that's an option that's available, but otherwise, it usually remains unchecked because based on those CPT codes that you're billing, we'll know you know, if we um, need to bill for the code or not. Okay, so just use this in special instances where, again, there might be a, an agreement with the facility not to bill for that evaluation. You can use this option if needed. All right, right below that, um, you'll see types of therapy. So these are the same options that you had when you were starting the track. Just gives you an opportunity to select or deselect some additional items before moving on to the assessment tab. And again, just based on the items you're selecting here, um, it will influence the options available in the assessment area. Before we move on to the assessment, on the right-hand side, just want to let you know this is a, where you can fill out your medical and treatment diagnosis information. We do have add buttons next to each field, so you can add the ICD-10 codes on your documents. As you click on the Add ICD-10 code um, window, it's uh, immediately going to pop up and show you a diagnosis selector tool. So you have some options as you're selecting your diagnosis codes. The first tab that you enter into is a search feature where you can search for keywords. As you type in the keyword that you're looking for, go ahead and click search and it will return uh, the details. Now, with the ICD-10s, you have a lot of chapters, a lot of subcategories, so this allows you to view the chapters. As you see, the view links are available. You can click on them in order to drill down a little bit further to see the specific items. When you get to a full list of codes within that category, uh, then you can look through it. Again, they're very specific, so if you're doing some generic searching and uh, you might receive a message stating that you need to get more specific or put in some more um, words in there just so we can kind of hone down the search results. Um, but as you're looking through that information, you can click the Add Code button when you do find a code that you would like to use. You'll see that as you click on that link, it will provide the code at the bottom left corner of the screen. If you need to go back and maybe um, search through additional items, you have a Back button at the top left corner. Okay, again, we do have a lot of subcategories available, so that might be something that you'll do just to see what um, the system is returning for you as you do your searches. 
If you need to search for additional codes, you can always come up to the top and search uh, for anything else. Okay, and then just click search. It'll go ahead and expand and tell you all the specific details. Sometimes we know exactly what you're looking for. So again, you'll see the add code option. When you're done selecting your codes at the bottom left corner, you'll have an onset date. You do want to make sure you fill this out. There is a drop down menu. It makes it a little bit easier to specify the onset date that you need. And then you'll click the OK option when you're ready. Now before we click the OK button, let's talk about an additional uh, search feature that you have. There is an option at the top left corner called Map from ICD-9. Clicking on this tab will allow you to enter in the ICD-9 code that you previously used to use. And you can then uh, see an equivalent in the ICD-10 list. Now it does require that you have the exact ICD-9 code. So you can't put a partial code in there. You have to put the exact code. But once you do that, and click Show Mappings, it will then identify an equivalent ICD-10 code. So some folks like that. Um, others really like the search feature because they can search by keyword, but it's really a preference. As you enter in your information, again, you'll make sure that you select your diagnosis codes and, of course, identify your onset date, and then you'll click your OK button on the bottom right corner of the screen. And that will identify all those codes that you selected here and you can see they're all listed on the documents. Now that was for the medical diagnosis, which is in the top section. Um, you'll repeat the process for entering in your treatment diagnosis. Again, there's an add ICD-10 button available there. You can click on that in order to pull up your search options, and then you can go ahead and search through the items um, that you need. All right. So we'll go ahead and add just an additional item here. Again, you can uh, select as many as you want for your patients, as many as you need. I do want to let you know that if you're selecting multiple diagnosis codes and you want to see them in a particular order on the document, you can click on the item. And we do have move up and down options that will move the code up or down in one placement at a time. Okay, So just, uh, again, a way to resort the list if you prefer to have them in a specific order. Once you fill out that general tab, you're going to move on to the assessment tab. As you click on this assessment tab, it's going to start with your first assessment section called Factors Supporting Medical Necessity. Now, the Factors Supporting Medical Necessity is going to be available for all disciplines. And um, along the top of the assessment tab, you'll actually see that title here in bold text. And that area is what we call a header. So you always know exactly what section you're working with. We do have a drop-down menu that's available next to that header area, which would provide a full list of all of the assessment sections you have within your document. And this would be dependent on your discipline and types of therapy that were applied to the document. As you look through that list, you'll see um, some of the sections with red exclamation marks next to them. That's an indication that within that section, you have at least one item with a required response. Now, as you're in an assessment section, on the left-hand side, we have assessment items. They will be color-coded to identify if they're required or optional. So, of course, your red items are going to be requirements. Blue items are optional, so you can review them and see if there's anything that you would like to fill out. Now, the first four items will introduce us to the narrative boxes. Narrative boxes are just free typing boxes. So you'll just click inside the field, and you'll type in your response. So we'll start here with the reason for referral. Just put in your information by typing it in. When you're done, you'll move on to your next field. And you'll see that as you start um, filling out the information, these requirements, once they're satisfied, um, will change to the black color coding. The next item is your current and past medical history on your patient. And then, again, you would just free type your information into the system. Now, as you're filling out these narrative boxes, you're going to come across some of them that have build buttons on the right-hand side. These builders help you fill out your documents. Um, there's good verbiage in there um, that you can utilize. We have two different types of builders that we offer throughout our documents. One is a sentence builder, and the other is a list builder. So I'm going to show you both and see how uh, they work. But just keep in mind, these are optional. You don't have to use them if you don't want to. 
We'll start with the Builder button next to the re Reason for Referral dialog box. As we click on that Build button, the window will appear, and at the top we'll have a preview section. So based on what you select, it will appear in this top section of the screen. In the lower half of the screen, we will show you phrases that are available for you to select from. Now this one is a, a sentence builder, so uh, we'll have a, a couple groupings of uh, phrases in order for you to you know, compile your sentence. So as you look through the options that are available, you'll select the one that you would like to use. It will display at the top of the um, builder area, and then we'll show you a different set of phrases that you can select from. And you'll continue to do that until you build your sentence. Now, as you're clicking on these items, just keep in mind that this would be the same options you would see over and over again as you run through this builder. So first few times you go through it, yeah, you are going to take some time looking at all of the items that are available. But then as you do that um, a few times, it'll make sense. You'll see those phrases, and then you'll get acclimated to the system. You'll move faster through those builder processes. Okay? Now, sometimes we'll have a, a list of items as we're going through that sentence uh, builder. So you can select as many of these options that you want to include in your sentence. Simply clicking on the items, they will be placed in the sentence above, and you don't have to worry about duplications as you know when you make a selection, it is going to remove it from your list. If at any time you're clicking on items and, and you realize you, you would like to remove it or you clicked on something by accident, we do provide an undo option at the top right corner. This allows you to undo one item at a time removing it from your sentence and placing it back in the list below. As you're going through the builder process, if you see a continue button at the bottom left corner, that just means that there's additional items available for you to fill out. Uh, so you can click on continue when you're ready to move ahead and again continue on with that process of looking at your phrases and making selections. When you get to the end of the builder process, you'll see a message that states narrative is complete. At that time, you can review the sentence you created in your preview area, and then if you are done, you can click OK to apply that sentence to your big narrative box. Um, if you would like to go back through the builder process, maybe create a different sentence, we do provide a new sentence option, and again, it'll take you back to the beginning of the builder. The same phrases are available, but making different selections to um, create different sentences are available. And then, of course, when you're done, you click OK, and it will apply those sentences to your narrative box. Now, keep in mind that those narrative boxes are, are free typing, so if you wanted to add to that information, you can position your cursor anywhere you want to start typing and go ahead and add additional text. And that could be in the beginning, middle, or even at the end of the sentence. Now, if you are going to use the builders, I do want to stress that um, the builders are great. I still want you to really customize those responses to the patients you're working with um, so it's not a canned response every time. You know, you really want to uh, make it uh, specific to the patient. The next builder we're going to take a look at is the uh, complexities and comorbidities impacting treatment area. And this builder is a list builder. So as I click on this button, we'll see the list available that we can select from. Anytime you're in a list builder, the items are sorted alphabetically. Again, this would be the same list you would see over and over again. So as you get familiar, you can take a look and click on the items that you need for your patient. Also keep in mind the undo button is at the top right corner if you ever need to use it. And when you're ready, you will see a continue button at the bottom left corner. As you click on that, it will give you that narrative is complete message. And you can click OK. That will add the information to the narrative box. Of course, you can always add additional text as needed before moving on. The next item is your prior treatment and outcome. This is an optional item, so if you choose to fill that out, you could do so, or you could skip it and move on. The next two requirements in this section uh, will identify button systems that we use. With button systems, you will have a labeled scale on each of the buttons that we provide, but just keep in mind the scales will change depending on the items you're working with. As you look at the buttons, we might use a single word or an abbreviation. So to give you some additional detail on what the button represents, you can hover your mouse next to the button as we provide tool tips. Okay, and you have a tool tip for each button, just to give you that additional detail. You also have tool tips next to the assessment items here on the left-hand side as well. Now, when using the button systems, you can only select one button at a time. That's just how that system works. Uh, they're also going to be color-coded to identify the severity of the impairment. 
So green's going to be an in level, yellow is a minimal assist, orange is a more moderate assist. Some red color coatings that you'll see throughout your documents will indicate severe impairment and mass assist with that patient. As you're working with the button systems, if you make a selection and now you would like to remove it, you have blue arrows here to the right of those buttons, and that's what we call a clear value button. So you can click on that at any time in order to remove your selection. Throughout your documents, you might come across yellow notepads, which are called comment boxes. Feel free to utilize those when necessary. That allows you to add a comment to the items you're working with. Simply click on the yellow notepad as it will pull up a big narrative box and you can type in any additional comments that you need. You know that at times the comments boxes can be required. So as an example here, if we click other for the prior living environment, you'll notice the red exclamation mark populate next to the comment box. And so we would want to make sure that we satisfy that comment before moving on. As you can see, the prior living environment is still listed in red, so we still have to satisfy those requirements. Once you fill out everything in a section, you're going to move ahead using the next buttons at the bottom or the top of the tab, whichever you prefer, and that'll take you to your next section that you have within your document. Now the next section for all disciplines will be the background assessment. This has uh, some precautions as well as directives and code status and respiratory status requirements. Again, with the precautions, it's just a narrative box here where you could type in some text or, again, you can explore the builders. Even if you open up the builder, you don't have to use it. There's always a cancel button at the bottom right corner. So I'm going to encourage that you look at the items that we have available. Okay, and of course, if you don't find anything, you can always cancel out. But just always, you know, take a look at there. You, you never know what uh, you'll find that you might need or want to use. So um, I would definitely look through them. Now, the next two requirements uh, will introduce us to checkbox systems. With checkbox systems, we can select multiple items to document for our patient as needed. We still have the tooltips there, so if you need some additional information, just hover your mouse next to the abbreviation or the uh, the words there. We'll give you those tooltips. And on the right-hand side, we have the comment boxes as well. Feel free to use those. Just like the button systems, if you're you know making selections, you might see a requirement of a comment box, so you know, keep your eyes appealed for that. And then as you're going through and filling out the requirements, of course, you'll see that in sections where we might have additional items available, feel free to look through those because you might need to fill them out for the patient you're working with. You'll see we do have some optional items here for the vision, hearing, hand dominance, and patient behaviors. Okay, once we review and enter in all the information we need, we can move on using the next buttons at the bottom or the top of the tab. Now, the next section for all disciplines will be the patient preferences. And that's where you can document hobbies and routine activities for your patients as needed. Again, this is a completely optional item, so you can choose to fill it out. We do have big narrative boxes and builders available. Or you can choose to skip and move on to any other sections by using the buttons at the bottom or the top of the tab. Now, for PT and OT documents, the next sections will be your range of motion and strength areas. We do have a generalized section that you can utilize. Or, depending on the patient and where the goals are going to be focused, we have detailed areas as well. Now, I will uh, point out a few items here in the general area. Uh, you'll see, again, everything's optional. Uh, everything listed in that blue color coding. For PT documents, we'll list lower extremity items first, then upper. If this was an OT document, it would be reversed, and we would list upper extremity, then lower extremity. For the range of motion items, you'll see that we have a scale that's listed here, and um, the, sale, the scale consists of within normal limits, within functional limits, or an impairment present. And in a general section, if you select an impairment present, you'll see that requirement of a comment box. In the strength areas, we have a five-point scale from um, zero to five with a did not test button. Okay, so again, just remember to read the scales as they will change depending on items you're working with. You also have your blue uh, arrows here to clear the values if you make any kind of selection, and of course your comments on the right. Uh, one additional item along the top of the assessment tab that you might come across is an add items button. Uh, if you see this on the screen, feel free to click on that as it allows you to see additional on-demand items you can include in the section you're working with. It'll tell you the group and the item that we can include. So in this case, we have uh, 
lower extremity strength and upper extremity strength groups where we can include a bilateral item if we'd like to use it. If that's something that you want to use, you can check it off and you can click OK. And within those groups, we'll be able to include that extra item. Uh, for OT, you'll have items related to ADLs. And then for speech, you'll have items available for swallowing, diet, textures, and liquids. So definitely check out that button as you come across it. There might be some information there that you might want to utilize. If you want to skip the general section, feel free to do so. Um, you can move on using the next buttons. And that will take you into our detailed areas. Again, we do have range of motion and strength options available. So feel free to kind of browse through and, and take a look at those. Now with the detailed sections, they're a little bit different. What happens is we'll get uh, specific here. So for PT documents, we have hip, knee, and ankle. OT would see shoulder, elbow, and wrist. As we see the scale for the range of motion uh, strength items, it's uh, within normal limits, within functional limits, or an impairment present. When we select an impairment present in a detailed section, additional information will now uh, display on the screen. Still optional, but you have all these other items available to you. So if you want to document that flexion or extension, you can do so. We have check marks here to indicate within normal limits, or you'll see the numeric fields here where you can identify a, a value. And so that is just a, an option. And you can get uh, really specific in those areas. If you don't want to type in the values in those numeric fields, we do have these up and down arrows that are available that will change the value in the screen. And um, you know, feel free to use that as well. At the bottom, there's a question to show passive range of motion. So if you answer yes, even more details are available here on the screen that will display. And again, up to you to decide what specific details you would like to include. As you're working in the assessment area and you're documenting all these details, want to let you know that um, you can create goals as you're going through the assessment process, and that's a preference. Um, you might find that's easier to do um, as you're putting in your details. Go ahead and create the goal um, if you'd like. Um, it's an option. I'll show you how to use it. But if you prefer to go through your entire assessment section, document everything, and then create your goals later, you could do that as well using the Plan of Treatment Goals tab. Okay, So you'll start seeing uh, blue rectangles here on the left-hand side of the assessment items, and those are just the option to create a goal to address that physical impairment. So if that's something that you want, you can go ahead and make the selection. It opens up a goal builder, and what that is is um, just very similar to the sentence builders where you have a starting point of a goal within the preview section and we're going to provide a build goal tab where you can enter in uh, the details here we're going to give you some options and phrases and we'll go through the process of creating a goal in this case we're going to select a goal value so we'll have some options um, that we can make a selection from and I want to let you know this B that is here is indicating baseline that's just off the information we included in the assessment area. So we'll try and draw that some of that information in. And of course, the color coding will identify the severity. As you click on your response, in this case, let's say that we're going to get this um, hip flexion to 90 degrees. Once we make that selection, it's appearing above in the, the goal area or the preview area. And then in the build goal section below, we'll have additional items to select from. You can go through and Click on the items that you need and walk through that builder process just like if we were creating a sentence. Okay, and You'll see a lot of options available. It's going to vary depending on the builder that you're in. But here we have some functional reasons. And you can look at all of them and decide which ones you want to utilize in your goal. Okay. Um, also, when you're ready to move on, you can click the Continue button at the bottom left corner. And if you need to undo anything, you still have that option at the top right. As you go through that builder process, when you come to the end of that uh, area, you'll see a message indicating that the goal is complete and for you to click the next button to collect the patient's prior level function. Bottom right corner has the next button and you'll just move on to the additional tabs that we have available. We do want to make sure we have prior level function. Keep in mind if that was captured in the assessment area, we will draw in that information. But in this case, we have not included uh, that 
detail for the patient. So in this case, it's red to indicate it's required. And we'll go ahead and specify the details, whether we select within normal limits or actually put in a specific detail. When we're done, we're going to click the next button at the bottom right corner to move on to the additional tab that we have, which is a baseline tab. And again, we do see that the information is filled out based on the data in the assessment area. We just want to review it, make sure it's correct, and then we can continue on. Now, this is the first goal that we're creating, so we'll come back later and talk about the related goals tab. So we only have two uh, items to kind of look at. Once we finish that information at the bottom left corner, as you create your goals, you do need to address your target dates. And you can do that by using the drop down calendar or the buttons that we have that will add a week or a day to the date in the field. Once you establish a target date, you can click finish and that will create the goal. It keeps us in our assessment section so we can continue to dock any additional details um, before moving on, of course. And uh, we will keep a running list of all the goals you create in the plan of treatment goals tab. Now, at this point, you can move on and take a look at all the uh, detailed areas. Uh, they all will work the same way. So if you select an impairment as present, additional information will populate on the screen. Okay. Um, we'll skip some of those detailed areas since we know how they function, and we're going to move on to some other sections to show you some different scales and systems. So I'm going to click on the balance section here. We have static and dynamic sitting and standing balance items that are required. And you also see a scale here from normal to unable with the did not test button. That's a common scale you'll see throughout our documents as well. And then as you go through putting in your specific details, then you'll see the options if you would like to create goals. They're going to start showing up on the left. And again, those are optional and really a preference for each individual. Um, any additional information that you would like to include, feel free to do so before moving on. And the direction of loss item, this is something that's optional here, but I do want to point it out because it will introduce us to drop-down systems. With drop-down systems, we'll have a, an arrow that you'll click on and you'll actually see a pre-designated list that you can select from. Um, the lists are obviously are going to vary depending on the items you're working with. Sometimes it's um, you know a numeric list, other times it's you know just a list of options. So you uh, look through those and, and make the appropriate selection as needed. When you're ready to move on, you click your next button at the bottom or the top of the tab. Okay, you'll also come across some sections that are completely optional, such as your cardiopulmonary and functional activity tolerance. So feel free to look through that and see if you need to fill anything out before moving on to a pain section. Now with the pain section, I want to demonstrate that um, as you, you know, fill out your information, you might see requirements immediately start showing up on your screen just based on the responses that you give. So for example, we have a pain at rest group and we have a, an intensity item that's required and we'll see a scale from 0 to 10. 0 is going to indicate no pain, 10 is going to be severe pain. Let's say that we identify no pain at this point. Uh, looking through the items, we just have optional um, items for the, the pain at rest and the pain with movement until we get down to the additional information here, and that's the pain assessment method would be our additional requirement. As we select verbal, you'll see that you know really nothing else going on here. It's up to us to fill that out. But if we change our response to the intensity level, and we select one, two, or three on that scale, which would indicate mild pain, you'll notice immediately we have two additional requirements at the bottom. Okay, and that's just based on my response. So now I'd want to make sure that I fill those additional requirements out. If I document four or higher on that intensity scale, you'll see even more items become a requirement. Okay, and you'll see that as you go through and start filling out your documents. So, you know, just keep your eyes appealed. You want to make sure you go ahead and satisfy those requirements. And again, it's just going to be your same systems in place. Is it a button system? Is it a checkbox? Is it a narrative box? Do you want to look at some of the builders? So that's going to be the normal function. So if we have that base down, then all the other documents, how you fill them out, um, would be really easy. Okay. Again, the pain with movement uh, is required just based on the responses from the previous group. And if we document one or higher on that scale, even more items will change to a requirement. And then when you're done with that section, you can move ahead using the buttons at the top or the bottom of the tab. And you'll see that process, you know, as you fill something out, move on. 
fill something out, move on. Right, the next area is just an additional abilities and underlying impairments. Okay, so again, I'm going to hone in on that functionality of the checkbox systems. You can select multiple items as needed. The button systems, make sure you read the scales, but you know that only one button can be selected at a time. As you move on, you'll get a cognition section, which for PT is optional. OT and ST, you'll have uh, requirements in those sections within your documents. Um, so just keep an eye out for that. And then we get into functional assessment areas, which would be dependent on the discipline you're working with. This is where we start capturing prior level function and current function of the items, as well as um, you, know, you might see some additional options available that you can fill out depending on the patient you're working with. So make sure you read the scales and then just move on as needed. And you'll see the, the functional assessments, you'll have you know, two or three uh, items, maybe even more, um, to accommodate your uh, discipline. Okay, so for PT, we have like a transfers item here. And there's also gate. Again, note that as you make your selections, you might see additional requirements pop up. And there's a gate analysis, and then we get into wheelchair um, mobility and wheelchair management. OT, you'll have some of those items as well. And then uh, we have another section here for some stairs and community mobility. So I'm just going to fill some of those out as we move along. I want to get into a section which would be available for all disciplines, and that's the objective test of measures and additional analysis. Now, this is an optional section, but I want to let you know that it has less list of test names and drop down menus with the scoring of the test. Right, now, the tests are copyrighted, so we can only provide the name and the score but you can make your selection. You do have comment boxes to type out any additional information or you can use the additional analysis button or, or narrative box here at the bottom of the um, section. And the last section of the assessment is going to be a, an assessment summary. Uh, this is where you'll have the prior level function details that you filled out during that assessment process and then you'll have some requirements here such as your, your clinical impressions, um, reason for skilled services, your risk factors, and your focus of plan of treatment. Uh, with the focus of plan of treatment, I just want to point out that if this was an eval only, where you're just assessing the patient and you're not picking them up for caseload, your focus of plan of treatment would be marked as NA, okay? because you wouldn't be creating a plan of care at all. Um, if you're going through a full document, then of course you do need to make a selection here on the focus of plan of treatment before moving on to the plan of treatment goals tab. Um, if you weren't sure if you filled all the requirements out, you can always click on the header. You'll see your drop down menu. We're just looking to make sure we don't have any red exclamation marks. This also gives you an opportunity to go back, make any kind of modifications if you need to any of the sections that you filled out. When you're ready to move on, then that's when you can click on that plan of treatment goals tab. What this does is it changes the view on the screen, allowing you to see any goals that you created during the assessment process, if that's your preference. Um, we do have an area for your short-term goals, and then we'll separate your long-term goals. Uh, we do have some requirements in our system for the goals. We do need one short-term goal and one long-term goal to be entered into your document before you will be allowed to complete it. Okay, and that's at minimum. If you prefer to create your goals after the assessment process, we have add buttons next to each of the sections that you can click on at any time. As you click the add button, it's going to take you into an impairment and deficit list. These are all the functional deficits and physical impairments that you documented throughout that assessment process. And it will default to the moderate and severe items. If you want to see all of the uh, deficits and impairments that you documented on, you can click on the drop-down menu at the top right corner and select all, and that will show you some of the low-lying impairments as well. So you'll see the color coding of the severity, the item, the section and group it came from, as well as what document. If something was already addressed by a goal, you'll see the goal number here in the first column. As you look through this list, if you do find something that you would like to create a goal for, go ahead and double click on it. The item will take you through the goal builder process and you'll see again at the top of the builder you'll have a starting point of a goal 
and in the build goal tab you'll see the items that you can then address uh, you'll see in this case we have a level of assist in this uh, information here on the left hand side the P will identify prior level function B is for baseline again they are color coded to identify the severity and then you can make your selection that you need also keep in mind that as you go through our builders you might see cues available if you want to use them you can or you can skip them if you skip past the cues just cl simply click on the continue button to uh, skip past the cues and if you're skipping past the cues also skip past the cue reasons as well and then you'll go through the normal process of looking at the items that are available. In this case, we have to select from some conditions. So you have a full list there. As you make your selections, then you can click Continue to move forward in that process. Here we have a list of quality of life reasons you can select from. And then when you're done, you can click Continue. Again, if you had more options, feel free to um, select from the items. But when you get to the end of that process, you'll see a message indicating that the goal is complete and for you to click the next button to collect the patient's prior level function. As you get to this process, you can click next at the bottom right corner. Again, we want you to fill out that uh, prior level function and baseline tab. Make sure that we have all that information captured. One additional tab that you might come across is something that your organization can activate, and that's a long-term goal tab. What this allows you to do, it's a time saver. It allows you to create a long-term goal from the ver verbiage of the short-term goal, which is listed in our preview area. So it just takes that same verbiage, it places it here in the long-term goal area. Now the items that need to be updated will display in red, so you have a, an area of, to focus on. In this case, we have to update the level of assist here. As we click on the red items, it will give us goal values to select from. And then once we identify um, and update that information, it'll change to the blue color coding. Okay? And this is only here to use if you were going to create a long-term goal that's similar um, to the short-term goal that you were creating. Okay? So you don't have to go through the builder process um, at that time. You, know, you could do it all right here in one shot. Again, this is an optional item, not a requirement. If you were not going to address a long-term goal that was similar to the short-term, skip it. Okay, but that's just a, an option that we offer. Uh, again, the, the short-term goal that we started out creating is in the preview section, and we do still need to address the target date for that goal. So at the bottom left corner, you'll see the target date fields that you can select from, and uh, make sure that you address those before you click your Finish button. Now, as we click Finish, it's going to create both of the goals at the same time. So we'll have a short-term 2.0 goal and then our first long-term goal. One additional item as you're creating the goals, when you click the Add Goal button, you're not limited to the items listed in the Impairment and Deficit tab. You do have a Skip option available at the bottom left corner that you can click on, which will provide a full list of all of the builder categories that we offer. As you click on a category, you could take a look at the phrases that are available within the builder and uh, you can create your goal that way. Uh, if you click on a phrase and it's not exactly what you were looking for, simply click the undo button. Uh, as you go through, um, if you look at all the phrases, exhaust all the items, you really still can't find what you need, simply click the undo button until you get back to the choose category section. You might find there's other categories that are suited for the goal you're trying to create. If you exhaust all the categories, all the phrases, still cannot find what you need, you do have one last option to create a goal, and that's what we call a custom goal. Along the top left corner, there's a custom goal tab that you can click on, which will reveal narrative boxes where you can type in your goal. So you're not using any of our scales or measurements, it's just you free typing the information that is available to you. Uh, just keep in mind, I want you to type in one goal in this field if you're going to use it. So don't type a list of two or three goals in here. We're just going to see it as one big goal. However, you can repeat this process as multiple times as needed. Um, once you type in the goal, definitely put in that prior level function and baseline information and address your target dates at the bottom of the screen. When you're done, you can click Finish and it creates the goal for you. Remember that the custom goals are just straight text. So you'll see our short-term 3.0 goal. It's just the text that I've typed in, just the prior level function and, and baseline details that I've physically typed in. Okay, It's not referencing anything else in the system. It's just text. 
as you're looking at the goals that you create, remember you can see all the details here as far as the, the verbiage. Um, if you're using our goal builders, we can see the uh, measurements that you're selecting and baseline information, target dates on the right. If at any time you need to edit a goal, we have edit options available. Feel free to click on the button as it will provide the goal in a preview at the top of the window. These uh, goals that you'll work with have um, narrative boxes and with those narrative boxes you'll notice that the verbiage in there is uh, blue which indicates a hyperlink. So you can click on a portion of the goal and we'll provide uh, an area where you can make adjustments by free typing the information in or uh, sometimes if you were referencing a scale then as you click on those items we'll give you the whole scale so that you can select from. Okay, if you update any information in the goal itself or target dates, as you click OK, then we'll update the, the screen immediately and update that document. If by chance you need to delete a goal, there's red X's that are going to be available and you can go ahead and click on the X in order to you know, delete. It is a permanent deletion from the document. Again, at minimum, we need one short-term goal and one long-term goal entered into your document before we can allow you to complete that document. On the right-hand side, you'll see areas to enter in your frequency, duration, and treatment approaches. Feel free to enter that information in. Again, there's numeric fields where you can type in the frequency. Usually that's going to be times per week, but if you want to just identify times, you have that as an option in the drop-down menu. The duration is also available here to establish weeks or days using the drop-down menu. If your organization enables a frequency range, you might see an additional checkbox, which means you have two fields available for the frequency. So you can do like two to three, four to five. You know, so you'll have a range that you can enter in. If not, you'll just have a single item that's available for the frequency. The intensity is listed as daily. However, there is a drop-down menu. So if you have orders for BID, you can select that option. And then we have the treatment approach section. Now this will provide a list of suggested CPT codes that you can use for your plan just based off the goals that you created. We'll give you the code and description. If you want to use them, feel free to check them off from the list, but you're not limited to just these items. You do have an add button that's available that will allow you to see the select services window and we'll show you a frequently used codes list that you can select from. However, if you cannot find the code that you need in that first filter, you do have a drop down menu at the top of the select services list and you can click the common codes option which is a larger list of codes that are available for you to use. Once you select all the codes that you need in your plan you'll click OK and they will appear here on the right hand side of the screen. As you establish your, your frequency, your duration, and your plan then there's one additional tab that's available here at the top of the document which is called plan of treatment other. As you click on this tab you'll have some requirements here to designate the goals if they were stated by the patient, caregiver, or both individuals. You'll even have an additional field to address the goals for that uh, particular person. And then you have the um, potential for achieving goals. That's going to be a requirement. And we also want to know if the patient or caregiver participated in establishing the plan of treatment. Okay, if you select no for that item, we'll have a requirement of a comment box. And once you satisfy everything in the document, if you are ready to mark this document completed, you'll have a completed checkbox at the bottom left corner of the document that you can select before clicking your save options on the right. If you are not ready to mark the document complete and you want to come back later and finish it, then all you have to do is um, do not check the completed check mark. Just simply click your save options on the right and that would list the document as incomplete, allowing you to come back later and finish it. Now your save options on the right, we have an apply button which will save the information but keep you working in the document. So if you've just finished a large narrative box or a large builder, you know it's really easy to just click the apply button so it just saves immediately. There's also a save which will save the document and close you out completely of that document taking you back to your case manager. Think of that as a final save. It's saving and completely closing you out of your document. We also have a save and print, which will save the information as well as pull up a print preview so you can review the document and, of course, print it out if needed. 
Now, as you're working in the document, we do have an auto-saving timer going on in the background. So there is a, a timestamp here on the left-hand side of the screen where you can see the last time the document was saved by the system. We also have a validate button here, which um, if you wanted to make sure that document is ready for completion, that you've met all the requirements, you can simply click on this validate button. If you see the message indicating that the document appears valid, then you're safe to say that you can complete it. Uh, we have checked to make sure all requirements are met. If by chance you are missing any requirements and you click the validate button, it will let you know exactly what section and item you're working with uh, and where you need to go back to to finish that information. So um, just keep in mind you can do it on your own using the validate button, but I also want to make sure that you're aware that if you mark a document complete, when you click your save options, the system will also run through that validation process and let you know if you're missing anything. Okay, so we want to make sure that everything is filled out before we mark the document complete and, and of course click our save options. If you are saving um, a completed document and everything looks good, then we will immediately prompt you if you would like to electronically sign off on that document. Okay, so you'll see a message saying, yes, I want to sign, or no, I, want, I don't want to sign at this time. Um, commonly, you know, you've just completed the document, you most likely will apply your signature, so we'll go ahead and say yes to that. What's going to happen is you will see an added station statement that you're going to read, and you're going to type in your password in order to electronically sign off on the document. Again, that's the password you use to log into Rehab Optima, and you'll go ahead and click eSign. Okay. Now, we're going to go back to the case manager here in a, a second, and we will then see the document, um, and we'll talk about some icons that you'll have to indicate that it's completed. All right. So the system is updated. We're back to the case manager. You can see a completed lock, which indicates the document is marked completed. And because we e-signed it, we also see this green check mark. It's very tiny, not sure if you can see it, but it is a green check mark there. The green check mark is identifying that we e-signed the document. You also see that uh, this document is listed as completed, and it also provides a date on when we completed that document. And depending on the rights that we have, we'll see edit or print um, available to us. Remember that edit will allow you to go back to the documents to edit them or make any changes, but that's only um, available if you have rights, okay? So I have rights to go in and edit documents, so when I click on the edit option, it allows me to go in to see the document. Now remember, we marked this completed. That is locking that document down, right? We said we were done with it. Uh, so you'll see that as we look at this information, um, it is read-only. So if the document is completed, you would need an additional right called unlock in order to unlock it and make modifications. Right? So just keep that in mind. The unlock button's at the bottom left corner. Um, if you do see that button and you want to make a change to that document, feel free to unlock it. If that document was already signed, you'll see a little message stating that any changes would need to be re-signed off on by that clinician. We'll go ahead and say OK, and now you'll see that document is available for us to make changes. Once we click the Save option, immediately we will see an added station statement pop up because it was previously signed. So it's going to say, hey, let's make um, the user review the statement, making sure all the information is accurate and correct. And then you're just basically attesting that you are going to sign off on those changes. And that's just your password that you use to log into Rehab Optima. And it'll go ahead and e-sign that change to the document. If the document was not e-signed but it was completed, then of course we can unlock it and make changes. You would still be required to put in your password, but that's just to save the changes you've made. Take a look at the print option. I'll go ahead and click on the print link. It'll pull up the preview of the document. It does take a moment for those images to generate, so just bear with us for a second. And um, we'll be able to see the documents. It's a good review process, but also um, it gets you to the point where we can then print them out uh, if we needed a hard copy. And we also have exporting capabilities to export to a, a PDF file uh, for emailing or archiving.
All right, so here is our document image. You'll see patient information at the top, followed by diagnosis information and your plan of treatment. You'll see that we do have an original signature line listed here, so that's the original time, date and time I applied my signature to the document. We'll see that. And then because I went back in that document and made a revision, you'll see the revision signature with, again, the date and time stamp that we revised that document. So we'll always have those time stamps. And again, uh, these are your, your e-signature fields here. You also see a physician signature item so that they can sign off and fax these forms back. And then also the uh, assessment portion, so everything you documented in that assessment area on the document. Along the top of the documents, you'll have your toolbar, so you can always see how many pages we generated and see all of the pages before you print them out. Your printer icon will allow you to print out the uh, hard copy. And then we also have a little uh, blue disk, which is what we uh, use to export. And we can export to PDF, which is a um, option, uh, definitely something you want to do for emailing or archiving. Zoom capabilities are built in as well, so you can zoom in and out. And we also have text uh, search options for text, so you can search for keywords if needed. When you're done with the preview, you can click the X at the top of the tab. That will take us back to the uh, case manager here. And again, we can see uh, the details of our documents. Muted.